Noticed we sang songs about faith. This is usually called the faith chapter, Hebrews chapter 11. We've been looking at some really basic doctrines uh, from the Bible. Um, the last time I preached, uh, we looked at repentance, and uh, today we're looking at faith. The, uh, the song we just sang is because of Hebrews chapter 12, and it talks about that great cloud of witnesses. You know, mm -hmm. uh, We've seen God bless in the past. Uh, we've seen God bless people before us, and uh, we, we know and expect God will, will bless us. God is faithful today, just as he was in ages past. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm going to read verses 1 through 8 to start this morning. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. We'll just stop there. Faith, uh, what a basic belief. E even in describing it, we use a word that has to do with, with faith. You know, repentance is kind of the other side of the same door when we talk about repentance and faith. Uh, repentance is turning away from sin. Faith is turning toward God. Uh, without faith, repentance just becomes remorse. You know, our world has lots of sorrow, but it doesn't have a lot of faith. Uh, there's people who, uh, they're really sorry about the, sa the situation that they're in, but they're not turning to God. Uh, faith takes hold of a repentant heart and brings them to God. Uh, we've looked at Acts 20, 21, where Paul talked about how he, he preached repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Both are very important. Repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And that leads us to our first point this morning, the object of our faith. You know, a lot of people have faith in the wrong thing or the wrong person. Right. The object of our faith is Jesus Christ. You know, in our world, people have lots of faith. And sometimes, let's be honest, some of it's very foolish. <laughs> you see people do things thinking they'll be all right and, and they're not all right. Uh, you know, there's some, some terrible things that people do. But the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We'll get over there in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The object of our faith, faith, the one we're trusting in, is Jesus. That's so important. Faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's so normal to a, a believer that you don't even really think about how wonderful it is sometimes. If you go through, for instance, the book of John, over and over he talks about how our faith is in Jesus. But you know, as a Christian, you just think, well, of course it's in Jesus. <laughs> you know, for instance, John 3.15 that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's in Jesus. John 3, 16. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Uh, later on, uh, right through the, the Bible and through the book of John, uh, he just, over and over, he talks about faith in Jesus. Jesus said in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Uh, John 12, uh, verse 46 I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. The object of our faith is Jesus Christ. Uh, later on in, in John chapter 20 and, and verse 31, he said, But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, 
the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. He's the object of our faith. He's the only one who can give us life. Uh, when the jailer asked the disciples, what must I do to be saved? The answer was simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Uh, when the, the gospel is presented, uh, that's what we point people to. The gospel has everything to do with, with Jesus. In the Romans, when we present the road of salvation, the Romans road of salvation, we often call it, uh, we come to Romans 10, where he says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The object of our faith. But you know, unfortunately, many people have mistaken faith. Uh, they have a faith that's not in the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people expect to go to heaven just because they have faith. <laughs> it's not in Jesus, but they just, they just believe. If you ask them, sometimes they can't even tell you what they believe. They just have faith in faith. Well, that's not good enough. Uh, some people have faith in themselves. I've, I've told you, I often ask people, if you died, do you think you'd go to heaven? Yeah, I think I would. I've been pretty good. They're trusting themselves in opposition to what God says. God says there's none good. Uh, some have faith in a feeling. Some people get a good feeling and think, yeah, that's, that's it. We didn't know it, but some years ago we had a fellow who'd, who'd been told by the Mormons, that the Mormons have a belief in this uh, warm feeling that they get. They have a name for it. I can't, can't remember it right now. But uh, Anyway, he had, he'd been in our services. He, he heard the gospel, and he got this warm feeling. See that? I'm saved. <laughs> and he told him, I'm saved. You know, I got saved. Well, he lasted a few weeks. Because his faith wasn't in Christ, it was in a warm feeling. Listen, I can give you a warm feeling. You know, electric blanket, bucket of water. I mean, uh, Queensland, you're going to get a warm feeling eventually. <laughs> That's not salvation, I can tell you. It's, the object is so important. What we're, who or what we're trusting in. Now, some it's a ceremony. Some it's an experience and so on. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. You need to have the faith that God will give you. And God gave us his son. Acts chapter 4, the, the disciples said, Neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He says he's the only way. You know, the world says that's bigoted, don't they? Oh, the only way? Well, that's just the way it is. There's only one way to God. It's through Jesus Christ. It's so important. You know, when we talk about faith, uh, we need to understand real faith is in Christ. The only faith that will help us for eternity. Well, in Hebrews 11 there, he, he used the, the words, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, the problem many times is people want to see. And God says, faith is not something you see. Uh, later on, we'll, we'll see, you know, I've never seen Jesus. Yet I believe. You, know, you can't see God. God's a spirit. Yet I believe. Um, you see, faith is not by sight. And you stop and think about it. Everybody's looking for something to see. They want to see Jesus. They want to see an angel at the end of their bed. Or, you know, they want to see something. God says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's faith. In 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4 and verse 18... 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18, he says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. I mean, temporary. Listen, if you want to have faith in things you can see, it's not going to be eternal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So first, th one of the things we see about faith is it's not by sight. It's either going to be by faith or it's going to be by sight. Secondly, Faith is taking God at his word. We'll look at some of these examples here in Hebrews chapter 11. They're all people who took God at his word. And amazingly so. I mean, you stop and think about Noah. He'd never seen an ark. I, I just, this week I was picturing him looking at the plans thinking, what, ark? What's that? <laughs> uh, 
He'd never seen an ark. He'd never seen a flood. None of us have seen a flood like that flood. And yet he believed, and he acted, and he became the father of faith. We wouldn't be here without him. Uh, you know, what a, what a great example. They, he took God at his word, and the Bible says that pleases God. Do you notice verse 6 of Hebrews 11? But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It pleases God when we believe him. If you ever had someone call you a liar when you weren't lying, <laughs> that's hard to take. And God can't lie. You know, for people to say that what God says is wrong, ooh, that's offensive. It pleases God when we believe him. And we should. Uh, the gift of faith is, is a wonderful thing. Noah believed God. He took God at his word. God gives the example as well in verse 8 of Abraham. You know, God didn't tell him where he's going. He said, Abraham, it's time to go. Yes, Lord. The Bible says he, he obeyed. Went out not knowing whether he went. Uh, and, and right through Scripture, we have examples. He, at the end of chapter 11, verse 39, he says, These all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. These are all Old Testament people. They hadn't seen Jesus hadn't come yet. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. We have all these people who believed God before Jesus even came. They believed God. They believed the promises of God that the Redeemer was coming, that he'd come to Bethlehem, that he'd be from uh, uh, Judah and David and all those things that, that God had said. Now, what a blessing it is. So many examples. And the Bible says then, verse 2 of Hebrews 12, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He's the beginning and the end. He's, he's all in all when it comes to faith. You know, the, the thing I, I noticed this week as I thought about this subject, I believe from Scripture you can so, show that God makes us able to believe. I think people are able to believe. Uh, the Bible talks here about Jesus is the author of faith. He's the, he's the one who, who makes it exist. In um, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, this is kind of an interesting word that he uses here. It talks about God, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, you know the word dealt. Uh, some of the kids, we got together, I say we, uh, and we were playing Uno. You ever played Uno? You could deal out the cards. Well, God deals out faith. <laughs> That's an interesting picture, isn't it? I believe the problem is not so much can you believe, it's will you believe. Now, the Holy Spirit, the Bible says faith is a part of the fruit of the, of the Spirit. Faith comes from God. The question is, what will you do with it? I could be wrong on this. I don't think I am. But we're talking here about the gift of faith. God offers you himself. He offers you his word. The question is, it's not that you can't believe, it's will you believe? And when people decide not to believe, that's not God's fault. He offers it to them. He offers his word. He offers his son. He offers, he, he deals out the measure of faith. And I believe we, we can believe. What will you do with it? You know, some people, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talks about a vain faith. Some people, when, uh, when the Word of God comes to them, when the testimony of a Christian comes to them, the word vain in the Bible means empty or useless. Uh, there are some people who just, they don't receive it the way God gives it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse, uh, verse 14. Let me get to 1 Corinthians. He says, If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. See, if people won't believe in Jesus, they can have all the faith they want. It's it's useless. It's empty. And there's people like that. They're not trusting Jesus. They're trusting their church or they're, they're trusting themselves or uh, they're trusting their good works. Uh, listen, when God offers you faith, it's faith in Jesus. And not to receive it in that way, the Bible says, is vain. You know, there's many people who believe a lot of things, but if they don't believe the gospel, their, their, their belief is, is empty. James chapter 2 talks about a dead faith. 
James 2, verse 20. You're familiar with this portion of Scripture. He's talking about faith and works. And verse 20, he says, Wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? You know, there's people who say, and the main thing he covers there in James 2 is, there's a lot of people who say they have faith, but they don't. <laughs> and the way we know that is nothing changes. Now, the preacher yesterday with the youth said, you know, when something as big as the devil leaving your life and God entering your life happens, he said, something's going to change. <laughs> That's a big deal. And it's true. You know, when you trust the Lord, you're not going to just stay the same. Life's not going to just hum along like it used to. I've been changed, you know, when I got saved. Amen. And that's, that's what faith does. There's some people who say they believe, but they don't really. They're not believing in the Christ of the Bible. They're not believing in the words of, of Scripture. Uh, they won't take God at His word. See, that's, we've given that as kind of a definition of faith. Faith is taking God at His word. Well, they won't. So their faith is dead. We understand dead. It means there's no life there. But you know, salvation is by faith. It doesn't take a lot of faith to get saved. You know, the Bible, what does it talk about? Like a grain of a mustard seed. You ever seen one of those? You can hardly see it. It doesn't take a lot of faith. It just takes faith in the right thing, in Jesus, in His finished work. And the Bible then says the just shall live by faith. See, we're saved to serve. We're saved to, to be like Jesus. And saved people can use their faith. You know, they've put their faith in Jesus. Sometimes we aren't the best. You remember the disciples, Jesus said to them, we're going to the other side. Now, he didn't tell them there's going to be a storm in the middle. In Matthew chapter 14, you can look at it. And boy, they, they were scared. They, were, they weren't, he, he says to them, oh, ye of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? And you know, we look at that, and, but we're like that many times. God's told us he'll take us through. And oh, we get so afraid sometimes. Oh, ye of, sometimes we're people of little faith. Sometimes we're people of weak faith. Uh, Romans 14, verse 1, he, he says, and this is talking to a church and to Christians, he says, Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. You know, a, a person of faith is one who takes God at His word. So if a person is weak in the faith, it means they're not taking God at His word very well. So we receive a person of faith, but if they're a person of, of weak faith, we don't listen to them a whole lot. <laughs> you know, we, we direct them to God's word, not to doubtful disputation. Uh, you might be of little faith. You might be of weak faith. Let me tell you, there's a, there's a simple remedy to this. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. Now, you're not going to like this. He says the remedy is exercise. <laughs> it's like dieting, you know. If you're going to lose weight, there's two things that have to happen. You have to eat less and exercise more. Isn't there a third method? You know, the world keeps trying to come up with a pill, don't they? <laughs> well, it's the same with faith. You know, you, to, to grow in faith, you've got to exercise it. That's what he says, Hebrews 5, verse 14. Strong meat belongs to them that are full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. We've got to start exercising faith. We, we see what God says, we do it. You know, he says, do this, we do it. You know, I'm talking in a spiritual sense, you know. Uh, we need to exercise our faith. And sometimes it's a scary thing. But remember, your hand's in his. You're not on your own. And as you're exercising that faith, he won't, he won't let you down. He'll put you through some things, but uh, we can grow in faith. We can, God wants us to be victorious in our faith. In Luke chapter 7, Jesus says of a man here that he's never seen greater faith in Israel than this, this fellow. Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Now Jesus' comment of him is, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Now, what the situation was, this was a soldier who had a servant who was sick. And he sent for Jesus to, to heal him. And Jesus was going to come and heal him. And he sent messengers and said, so you don't have to come. You just say the word. That's all we need. Do you, do you see what he, what's happening there? He said, I don't need to see. I can just believe. You see, faith is not by sight. Faith is taking God at his word. And what a blessing to see this man of, of great faith. Sometimes 
We can do that. <laughs> Sometimes we're just going to have to believe. We're not going to see. Uh, when they chose deacons for the first church there in, in the book of Acts, they looked for men who were full of faith. You ever, you ever notice that? Steve, they, they found Stephen full of faith. Philip uh, full of faith. Stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people. Uh, we need to be full of faith. That means that it's just popping out. <laughs> you know, They're just full of faith. A lot of times we use that expression in a bad way. He's full of baloney or something, you know. But uh, we need to be full of faith. That needs to be what's, what's going on in our life, in, in every area of life. Not just at church, but every situation. Uh, James chapter 2 talks about those who are rich in faith. It's an interesting verse because he relates it to people who are poor physically. Hath not the God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? and heirs of the kingdom. Listen, we should have a lot of faith around here. <laughs> We're not rich people. And you, know, you can understand how that would work, don't you? If you have lots of money, you're probably not going to trust the Lord for things as much. You just go buy it. But if you don't have money, you, know, you, you just have to pray and say, well, Lord, if you want me to have it, you're going to have to give it to me. You ever had God give you something? It's amazing what God can give you. Over the years, we've just had things that you think, why would God give you that was well, because God knew, you, God knew you needed it. Uh, we need to be rich in faith. Then in 1 Peter 5, when he's talking there about resisting the devil, uh, he says that we need, to be, we need to resist him steadfast in the faith. 1 Peter 5, verse 9. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Uh, we're all facing the same conflicts. It's the same devil. It's the same world that we're, we're fighting. We can be steadfast in the faith. In Ephesians, when he talks about the armor, he says, and above all, taking the shield of faith. You know, one of the songs we, we sang today, uh, the shield of faith was in there. And, uh, you, you know, when you think about it, the, the devil wants to distract you and get you to drop it. And then he clocks you up. <laughs> and when God says, keep that shield of faith up. Keep God's word in front of you. Uh, you live by, by God's word. And really, faith is total trust in the Lord. In Romans 8, he says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. How do we know that? By faith. You know, we, we hold up the shield of faith when it comes to knowing. Uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, most Christians know 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You probably know 5, 7. He says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. When it comes to your life, it needs to be by faith. Faith is total trust in the Lord. It's not trust in yourself. It's not trust in your circumstances. It's not trust in your husband or wife. <laughs> it's trust in the Lord. Serving, Titus chapter 3 and, and verse 8. You, you can do a study like this. There's, there's a lot of things that come up when it comes to faith. He says, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Listen, if you're living by faith, God calls you to serve. We're, we're saved to serve. The just shall live by faith. Total trust in the Lord. 1 John 5, and again we, we sang a, a song, uh, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. You know, as you're facing the difficulties of life, it's by faith. It's not going to be by sight. It's going to be by faith. And stop and think how many times you've, you've selected sight rather than faith. We all do it, but we need to exercise faith. You know, the tendency, you know, you'll go for sight and you think, no. You'll pull against it and you'll exercise faith. I'm going to believe. Uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. Faith should be the impelling force of your life. Now, it starts with saving faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. We need to be saved. Put our faith and trust in Christ. And then he calls us to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. He says that over and over in Scripture. Uh, not faith in what we want. You know, the problem is sometimes we say, well, God, I want this, and I'm going to believe you that you'll give me this. <laughs> now we need to say, God, what do you want from me? And look to him. Not faith in what we want. Not faith in what we think should happen. We have these ideas of how life should go. Listen, God's a lot more clever than we are. 
He knows how our life should go. And if we're going to be His servant, we've got to do what He wants. Faith. Faith in God through His Word. What He says. What He wants us to think. Do you realize it doesn't make any difference what you think? In one sense. It doesn't make any difference what I think. What makes a difference is what God thinks. That's what we need to find out. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, when he says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance. That's a strange picture, isn't it? What he's saying is God will keep his promises. Faith is the substance. We're not looking for, you know, bricks and mortar. We're looking for the substance of what God will do. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. You realize we're surrounded by the testimony of God's faithfulness? Every morning you get up and you believe that the world will have turned and the sun will have done its job and everything is going to be in place. and You know, you know morning is going to come, just as surely as morning follows night. God is faithful. We also are surrounded, like he says in Hebrews 12, by the testimony of the faithfulness of people who's gone, who've gone before us. There have been people who have put, who've put God to the test. They've exercised their faith, and God has not let them down. By faith. We're saved by faith. God calls us to live by faith. Listen, faith is not working up some feelings. There's a lot of religion based on feelings, isn't there? Be careful. Now, God gives us feelings. We're, we're not against feelings, but faith is not in our feelings. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Look at, at 1 Peter if you're in Hebrews, it's just a few pages to the right. 1 Peter 1, verses 8 and 9. This is a great couple of verses here. 1 Peter 1, verses 8 and 9. He's talking in verse 7 about the trial of your faith. Then verse 8, about Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. If salvation is just as real right now as it will be in heaven. If you've trusted Christ, you're saved. Our faith is in Christ. It's a personal relationship with Christ, whom having not seen, we love. It's by faith. So the question this morning is, who is your faith in? For some, it would be, what is your faith in? Because it's not in a person. But the important question is, who, who is your faith in? If it's not in Christ, it's a dead faith. Uh, it's an empty faith. You need to believe not only who He is, He's the Lord, He's the Savior, He's the Eternal One, but you need to believe what He's done. That's the Gospel. Christ died for our sins, He was buried, He rose again. We need to believe based on His Word. We're born again by the Word of God. We looked at repentance. That's to turn from sin. Today we're looking at faith, turning to the Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Let me encourage you. Uh, if you're not saved, God says you can. He'll, he'll deal to you the measure of faith you need to be saved. If you are saved, He'll give you the faith you need to, to live for Him. But He'll expect you to exercise it. You've got to use it. Faith without works is dead. We're going to sing a song this morning, Only Trust Him. I guess we could say, Trust Only Him. It's page 163. And I want to encourage you this morning, apply this to your own life. Not by, by sight, but by faith. Ezra, you come and lead us in, in this song. Let's stand together, page 163.